criminals for allegedly dealing and being in possession of illicit cigarettes. The police spokesperson, Manisela Lidwaba, says the suspects were found with illicit cigarettes with over one million rand. The suspects will appear in court soon. Then Dani Rani Paswa reports. Police say the suspected cigarette smugglers were arrested after their truck was stopped and searched on the general Perupani Road. The confiscated illicit cigarettes worth more than one million rand. The suspects will face the charges of dealing in illicit cigarettes and contravening the Immigration Act. When they appear in court, they have been remanded in custody. A mob has killed a suspected robber in a village outside Libuahomu in Limpopo. Police say and the sus suspected robbers managed to evade the mob. Two vehicles belonging to the group of suspected robbers were also burned. Police say the mob tracked down a group of robbers who had broken into a shop. The police spokesperson Manisela Lidwaba says they are investigating multiple cases including robbery. According to information, the mob spotted one of the vehicles and cornered the suspects who abandoned the vehicle and ran to the mountainside. One suspect was caught and held <laughs> to death. The vehicle was also set alight. Upon arrival, police found that the so crowd had already dis dispersed and the 35-year-old deceased sustained multiple injuries. You got no respect to the uh, employees, the workers. You will uh, just change to the conditions of uh, the working environment where we are working. He will just decide on his own. He just thinks on his own. And finally, a baby grand piano, the late Queen star Freddie Mercury, used to compose some of the band's greatest hits, has been sold at auction in London for nearly 40 million rand. Sotheby's auction house earlier sold his original music manuscript for the song, Bohemian Rhapsody, for more than 20 million rand. The 15-page document contains Mercury's notes, ballpoint pen and pencil, which reveals the hit was originally called Mongolian Rhapsody. The auction Engineer Oliver Barker says Mercury's personal collection attracted a large crowd. What we've witnessed here at Sotheby's these last few weeks is nothing short of phenomenal. This has been truly a sale to capture the minds and the hearts of all the public all over the world. By the time the doors close on this once-in-a-lifetime month-long exhibition, we had welcomed 140,000 visitors. Somebody Recapping the top story, the supermarket chain Pick and Pay has paid tribute to its founder Raymond Ackerman who died at his home in Cape Town at the age of 92. For SFM News, I am Anne Musa. Award-winning South African celebrity chef and TV personality Lorna Maseko as she trains her stilettos for practical footwear. And meet a feast of local faces from celebrities to the country's incredible chefs, producers and restaurant owners. Open up to homegrown taste with Lorna Maseko, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. on S3. I heard Randwater talking on the radio about how dangerous it is for people to encroach on the pipeline servitude. Yes, those high-pressure Randwater pipelines are under the ground distributing many liters of water. When people build on top of the pipeline, Randwater is unable to conduct maintenance on the pipeline, which has a negative impact on water provision. Pipelines can burst without warning. People could get seriously injured or worse. Yes, people can die from a bursting pipe. That is why people need to understand that Randwater servitude is where a Randwater pipeline is located. If we build up houses or businesses on a rainwater servitude, then we are encroaching on that servitude. They say if communities want to know whether they've encroached over servitudes, they should look for the rainwater beacons. The beacons indicate the presence of rainwater pipelines under the ground. They're rectangular, made of concrete, are painted either white or blue, and have the rainwater logo on them. Let's take a walk around our area to see if there are any rainwater beacons so that we can also tell the neighbors. Rainwater, celebrating 120 years of existence existence and still finding new ways to provide clean portable bulk water when two african nations meet there's always a point to prove who the real giants are the leopards are heading to orlando stadium to test bofana bofana's character however bofana baga hugo bros believe they have a master plan to silence the leopards this is the international frenzy south africa versus democratic republic of congo this tuesday 12 september at 4 30 p.m live on sabc sport on TTT channel 4 also available on sabc plus and sabc sport.com Hashtag, we love it here. Put it on SABC Sports. The talking point on SAF.
FM, weekdays, 9 a.m. till midday. Imagine if you live at the center of a global conservation spotlight, but you have no voice. Your aspirations are not valid and your knowledge does not count. Sadly, this happens very often in local communities of key ecosystems around the world. In conservation, my field of work, I call it community-based conservation washing, which is basically when conservation organizations claim to work for communities, only to inform and impose pre-designed conservation plans instead of including them misguiding media and funding sources. Think of greenwashing and then apply it to conservation. Hopefully, we can all agree that approach is not right and it needs to be tackled. And how about we start by twisting classic community-based conservation questions upside down? Say, instead of wondering how to bring science and policy to communities, how about we find a way to bring the voice and centenary knowledge of communities to research and policy making. But see, the answer to such questions is never a one-size-fits-all solution because it needs to be tailored to the unique environmental, social, and economic realities of each community. Real community-based conservation goes much beyond ensuring an elder has a ceremonial seat at the table and is interviewed. It fosters fierce independence, doesn't further a dependency. Lasting conservation comes from within, really from completely, you know, from scratch, right? Um, they, they literally were tarred and slogged into building uh, the business empires that um, they ended up having um, at uh, the time of both their deaths. And I was asking myself whether those kind of business people exist in South Africa uh, right now, right? I was asking myself that question uh, because, I mean, there's an impeccable story about Maponya and Rina. Uh, uh, his wife, um, an impeccable story equally about Raymond, uh, I keep forgetting uh, his wife's name, but I will remember uh, his, his, his wife's name. And, uh, you know, I, I heard a story, one of the stories I heard about Raymond Ackerman is how, um, you know, for the purposes of research, because uh, he started the pick and pay group with four stores, right? For the purposes of research, what he would do is um, he would go to, um, you know, the, the, the the mall that had uh, a pick and pay store, considering they started with four, and he would sit outside and wait for. Uh